Hello everyone, welcome to Slip Joint Sawyer. Today we're going to be doing a monthly EDC pocket dump and this is of course is going to be for June 24. Before we jump into that though, I want to give a big shout out to quite a new channel on the scene. They are from Canada and we're talking about pocket EDC. Got a great slogan on there, be handy. Please go check out his channel. He was nice enough to do a sticker swap for me. So his arrived today. I sent some of mine out for him and he's going to be a great member of the community. He's got a real passion for knives and he's got some really relaxing content and I really enjoy the stuff he's putting out. So please make sure you go and check him out. I will link him in the description below so you can find his channel. We'll pop that up there in the corner. So Pocket EDC, please go and check him out. EDC Pocket Dump for the last sort of month. So I've been trying to vary up my carry uh, using different sort of methods of carry. Um, trying to do some days where it's really light, some days where I'm trying out new gear. So that's what I've been doing the last sort of month. So first thing in my pocket every day really has been my keys. Um, if I'm going out and about, of course, I've got my car keys. I do have a nice little GT Nano flashlight from Lumentop on here. Really great little bit of kit. It does keep this light on permanently all the time, though, so I'm not entirely sure how much that drains the battery. Kind of wish that wasn't there, but it does have some really nice light modes. I'm not going to turn it on because it is very bright and there is a strobe and I don't want to set anyone off with that. With that, as always, I have my, I'm going to say semi-customised because it is just scales off a classic SD. I've put on a Rambler, but it's the turquoise scales. I wanted to get them to match my sticker as much as I could. But the standard Rambler tools and I put black toothpick and tweezer on there. And then, of course, you get the scissors and the nail file on the back side of that too. Rambler is probably my most carried 58mm Swiss Army knife. It's always on my keys, whether it's on my car keys or my house keys. I like to keep them separate because this is quite a big chunk to have on your keys. And along with that, we've got a twisted assisted brass lanyard bead. But that flashlight is really great. I put a short up of that recently of an unboxing. It's a really cool bit of kit, so make sure you're checking that out. House keys then. Obviously, house key garage key we have a couple of new additions so we have this nice very sort of simple tweezers but you can see there's nice teeth in there to grip and it slots very nicely into this sort of keyring attachment and then it, that little tab holds the tweezers in there then if you can see that tab on there and i've had no issues with them falling out so i'm happy to recommend this i think it's great i've used it to take out splinters pick out small bits of um, small bits of screws I've dropped on the floor. You can see it is USA made and these are available on Twisted Assisted. We have, as always, Rosecraft Blades Awanata. It's always on my keys and it's probably never going to leave because it's a really heavy use small knife. So what I mean by that is you have this wonderful Warncliffe blade, D2 tool steel, nice long pull and you can get about a three and a half finger grip on that for my hand size. Model number for you guys are interested, RCM009 and then the OR of course for the orange G10. But the half stop and the walk and talk on this for a small knife is phenomenal. Definitely the most underrated knife that Andy's put out for Rosecraft Blades. If you haven't got one of these, please go and pick one up. Honestly, you won't regret it. And you'll understand why I leave this on my keys because I've paired it with a Victorinox jet setter. So for any of you that don't know, that is only the scissors and the sort of combo tool on there. And I think that's the perfect sort of combination. You've got the heavy use blade and the tools you all know and love from Victorinox. We have an Olite and this is the I, uh, I1R2 Pro. This has the two light modes. So you've got a low, turn it a bit further and then you get a super bright mode. This is also rechargeable, which is one of the reasons why I love it with a USB-C. Just twist it, turn it on and off. Perfect bit of kit. This obviously is in the orange. Other colours are available. You can see how much it's been on my keys. It's been battered, used and abused and it is my most used flashlight but highly recommend that for a bit of EDC gear. Lastly on there we have a gift. This is from Eric Starr. Sent this along with a couple of other bits and pieces and this is a damn design little ghost. So Eric, once again, appreciate it. On my keys ever since you sent it and there's no sign of it going anywhere. I think it's fantastic. And it really fits in with my orange theme too. So that is my sort of keyring carries. 
With along with this, I've either been carrying a leather wallet, and this one is from the Shire Supply. You can see you've got the pop of snaps on there with my cards in, and I've been keeping some scrap bits of card, paper in the back there if I need to make notes. You can see there's a nice kind of patina coming on that wallet where it's been banged around, used and abused, markings on there, but that's all part of the character of the leather. And if I'm not carrying that, I will be using a Viper Aid pouch with the knives in the front as well. And you can see this is the VE15 on the back. You can see we've got the card slot on there. Nice little Velcro patch for morale patches. Two nice sized slots on the front there as well. And you can fit some really cool things in these. So this is big enough for a three layer Swiss Army knife and a pen. Or on the right hand side, maybe like a medium stockman to just about getting a large stockman on this side. But again, Viperade V15. This is my most carried sort of pouch. I've had it for, I would say, nearly a year now. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. And it's definitely standing the test of time. Ignore the fact that the zipper snapped off. That was my fault. I jammed it in a door. But no point in me replacing it because it's in fantastic quality other than that. So Viperade V15, fantastic gear. Shire Supply leather wallet. Description, a, a discount in my description for this you can save yourself 15 percent, and this is uk made so another reason why to check them out now if i'm using the wallet and not the pouch i would also have a leather slip to have my main carry knife in and that is another one of course from the shire supply company and along with that i want to give a shout out to randy's wsg he's recently sent me over a slip and it's absolute fantastic quality handmade by him stitching really well done nice sort of distressed brown leather which is the colour I really like and it fits in perfectly with my sort of carry you can see how well the colour matches with that and the way I would sort of use this and I have been the last sort of week or so I've really been carrying it either been this or this but I would have my main sort of slip joint so you can see we've got the Beaver Creek Barlow in there and my SVJ brass pen now that brass pen has replaced recently my Olight pen, which has been my most carry bit of gear. But Mikey Newman put me onto these and honestly it's phenomenal the pen he's created. But you can see how well that fits in there. Nice carry, nice and slender, perfect for like a day in the office. You want to take something really light. So another slip from Randy. So Randy again, thank you very much for that. Apart from that though, I'd be carrying the pen in the side of a Shire Supply slip with the elastic and any number of one of these slip joints i'm going to show recently i've started carrying this again this is the rough rider classic cinnamon bone stag half hawk you can see there's the patina on the blade there it's fantastic the walk and talk is amazing and it's a really inexpensive knife and really affordable i think they're about 20 pounds on heine haynes maybe a bit less than that in the us but you get a full size knife really nice ram's foot blade on there Wonderful bit of kit. Of course, the Rosecraft Blades uh, Beaver Creek Barlow. This one in the new smoky grey bone. Recent release, well, re-release, I should say. RCT006GY D2 tool steel. Honestly, their best-selling knife of 23, and you can really see why. Fantastic quality. It's made perfectly. I can't find any flaws on it at all. Anything that I would consider a flaw. You can see we have usage because i'm not afraid to use this knife it's d2 steel and i know i can make it last beaver creek barlow now i have been carrying a modern very recently this is one i picked up from twisted assisted and this is the beztech man mini dundee and that would be a double detent design rather than the full size of the dundee being a liner lock knife there's going to be a full review of this on my channel coming very soon so i don't want to give too much away but Wonderful flipper action, D2 steel, satin blade, or should I just say, sort of really sort of matte satin finish on that. Twisted assisted logo here, and that's all I'm going to give you for that. But it's phenomenally fidgety. It's a wonderful knife. On to my sort of traditional carries. There's always going to be a lot of Swiss Army knives in my carry, and these are my three main ones for the last month. We have Victorinox Ranger, and this is one I've modified with the extra slot on the plus scales. I added a Fire Striker, the screwdriver, some Tinder, a pin. We have the pen, and you can see, instead of a toothpick on here, I modified the tweezers so they would have a point on the edge. 
so more like precision tweezers and then I also retained the main tweezers as well on the front see we have a five layer design honestly it's slowly becoming my favorite Swiss Army knife the the versatility with this is fantastic every bit of kit every tool you could possibly want saw we have a file on there we have scissors the standard opening layer the whole not whole lot i don't know what else you could possibly want from a swiss army knife so the ranger honestly becoming one of my favorites i think compact still number one ranger might be pushing up there with number two this of course is my uh, custom compact uh, custom compact from dan at Bladebridge customs all the stuff you'd love from the compact, but replacing the corkscrew with the Phillips screwdriver. That's wonderful. And look at those brass liners. Patina on those is fantastic. And it's still scary sharp. All I've done is strop it every now and then. Dan does a ridiculously good job of sharpening knives. So make sure you're checking him out for any sort of bits and pieces he's got on his website. Another Swiss Army knife I've been carrying then. This is a Victorinox. Uh, sportsman of course in brass which was from dan as well see we have his custom mark on the blade and this one has seen a lot of use you can see the scratches on the blade there and this has been in my pocket i would say about 70 percent of the time in the last month i've really been enjoying carrying this nail file on there it's basically a small spartan with a nail file but the brass just makes it that little bit a little bit more special and i got black micarta scales on here and these are actually quite quite unique really it's an 84 millimeter but it's an 84 millimeter plus so we can see we have the pen slot and that is exactly the same size as the 91 millimeter pen it fits in there perfectly and just gives an extra sort of bit of versatility for what you're carrying and you can see i've been using this with the pocket clip works great for office carries that's pretty much what i've been using it for down to the last three then, these are my traditional knives of the month. Uh, start off with 8OT, probably not a huge surprise to any of you. This is definitely my most carry traditional knife. Loads of patina on that blade, it gets used for everything. Standard sort of stockman pattern, so you get the sheep's foot, spay blade, and of course that main clip point blade. Saw cut delrin, immaculate fit and finish, and you can see how dark those springs have gone from use. We also have the 34 OT. This one has also seen a lot of use this month. You can see the patina building up on this one. And I've really been leaning towards these sort of medium sized stock ones. I just think they fit my carry needs perfectly of needing a smaller knife, nothing too big. I don't do too much crazy stuff during the day. And honestly, it's just more comfortable in the hand, I feel. So that is the 34 OT. Same blade layout exactly as the 8 OT, just in a smaller pattern. And then finally, one I picked up very recently, say in the last sort of two or three weeks, that's barely left my carry. And this is a USA made 303 Stockman. This is a Camillus one you can see made obviously from the long pull and the no date stamp on the blade. So you've got Buck 303 USA. Put a nice screaming sharp edge on this, give it a bit of a clean up. And honestly, it's as good as new. Blades don't look like they've had much use at all. And if they have been used, it's been very lightly. Really wonderful build quality. You can see the patina on those carbon springs. Veilox on the scales and then the buck shield there, which is the hammer. Knocking a nail, uh, a, a knife through a bolt. So there we go, guys. That's my sort of pocket dump for the last month. A lot of different bits of gear back and forth. The only one that's been in my pocket permanently is the... Uh, twisted assisted mini dundee and that's what i got that under test i want to see what it's like to carry a double detent for a couple of weeks so i really want to put it to the test make sure you're checking out my good guy pocket edc links in the description for his channel go and give him a sub he's got some really great stuff out but i really hope you enjoyed this kind of video please be sure to like subscribe and ring that bell for notifications and i'll catch you in the next one peace out